Microsoft is starting to build out its HoloLens ecosystem. The company announced it's opening its Windows holographic operating system that powers its headset to third-party devices. Joining us now to break it all down and what this means is Dan Costa, Editor-in-Chief at PCMag.com. Dan, thanks for being with us. Uh, now first, tell me about the latest developments. What does this mean for Microsoft and what does this mean for the future of HoloLens? So Microsoft announced its HoloLens platform about a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, um, and it was a developer kit, and it's still available for developers. Developers can get one for about $3,000, and it's an augmented reality platform. It allows you to sort of merge virtual objects into the real world and create games, create how-tos. Um, it's a very robust platform. Uh, what they just announced today is that they're going to open it up to third-party developers. They really want HoloLens, that underlying interface, that underlying operating system, to be the operating system for all virtual reality platforms. So the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, um, could run on this Microsoft platform. And it's the same playbook that they ran for PCs, that they'll provide the operating system, they'll let hardware vendors differentiate and build different hardware products. But the great thing will be software developers will be able to build to one platform and then have them work on all different devices. Okay, broadening it out a little bit, let's talk about competition in this very hot space. Uh, yesterday at the Code Conference, Jeff Bezos of Amazon saying that, uh, hinting, let's say, that they could potentially get into wearables. Is this the kind of thing, you know, wearable, this mixed reality, is this something that you could see Amazon getting into and succeeding at? Yeah, I mean, Amazon, I think every major tech company is looking at the future of human-machine interfaces. And, and realizing that you know, the mouse and keyboard are very good for a limited set of tasks, but our, the way we work with technology is changing, and we really want to have, there's a lot of benefit to having an Amazon Echo on your kitchen counter, as millions of people have found out, uh, for all sorts of things that you didn't think you would need, like setting a timer without having to go to the microwave and type in the codes, uh, like uh, playing radio and changing the volume on your stereo without having to walk over across the room and turn it up or down. You know, those types of interfaces work really well with voice-driven uh, assistance, and uh, I think every major tech company is going to be investing in this space. Okay, and looking at the HoloLens, though, the price tag is pretty steep. Certainly, uh, most people wouldn't be able to afford one. When are we going to see a consumer HoloLens? Yeah, so we've got AR platforms on the market now for about $600. They require very high-end PCs. The thing about the HoloLens is that it doesn't require that extra PC. It's actually built into the, into the system. So prices are going to come down. I mean, we've got, if it's a $600 entry point now, the HoloLens is a bit above that. You're going to see these prices come down by the end of this year. It's going to wind up being under some stocking, uh, in some stockings and under some Christmas trees. So uh, prices are going to move down really quickly. Okay, then tell me a little bit about how it works because you've actually used it and we're watching sort of some of the images across the screen right now, which looks incredible. But is there a way that you can explain to us what it's actually like? Does it feel like you're there? And what kind of stuff can you use it for? Yeah, the very, I mean, I, I've tried a, a variety of uh, HoloLens uh, demo products, and they range from a simple game of Minecraft in the room that you're in. You can build it right, you can play it right on the coffee table in front of you. 3D modeling, if you're building a 3D model, you can do that in real time, in real space, and it actually feels like that 3D model is in the room with you. But probably the best demonstration was probably the most prosaic, which was uh, rewiring a light socket. Mm -hmm. And you, had the, you could see the wires in front of you. You could actually have somebody Skype in and point out which wires you should connect to which wires. Um, seems really basic, but it's the type of thing that, you know, when you think about how to and you think about um, a service industry, being able to walk people through complex tasks using these virtual reality systems is really amazing. And that's where HoloLens uh, has some of the best technology I've seen. Very cool. And you're saying that I could ask for one of these under my Christmas tree this year, that soon it could come to consumers? The, the VR systems for sure. I mean, those are on the market, so you can get your HTC Vive, you can get your Oculus Rift. Um, PlayStation VR might be on the market by the end of the year. HoloLens probably won't get to consumers until next year. Um, and even then, it's probably going to be on the, at the high end of the market. But uh, it'll come down, let's say, maybe the year after that. Okay, gotcha. I'll know what to ask for Christmas in 2017. <laughs> Dan, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thanks for watching to you out there. I'm Deirdre Boza. Have a great day. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.